everybody. Hey, VPs. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes and also going to make tag with um, our other uh, page to make sure that everybody who wanted to uh, join us this evening at five o'clock to make sure that you get in so you can get some really hopefully gratefully great information about finding out if you really have plantar fasciitis. I find that this is a topic that a lot of people have a misconception about or they self-diagnose themselves incorrectly. And so um, this happened a couple of times, ironically, with this specific diagnosis a couple of times this week um, with um, uh, some friends, actually, as well as a few uh, people that I saw in the office. Um, so you're still diagnosing yourselves out there. Hi, April. Hi, Tyrone. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Dr. Shara. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to be talking here today about do I have plantar fasciitis? And there's some other things that you guys out there self-diagnosing yourself with in relates to this particular area of the body. And also, I want to talk to you about some other ailments that you may be suffering from that may have started from the plantar fasciitis. So we're going to get into that a little bit in a second. And I want to see, hey, Jesse. Hi, Dr. Jesse. Thanks for joining us. I love that. Awesome. Guys, if you um, hear Dr. Jesse in the comment section, that was one of my uh, lead congrats, a fellowship for sports and integrative medicine. She's a specialist as well. Check her out. Hi, Ayana. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Y'all going to see me look down just for a second here because I'm going to actually um, make sure those who are joining in on the um, other page to make sure that you're able to do so. I got a couple of inboxes about that, and I just want to make sure that everybody who is trying to join in is able to join in. Hi, Carol. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. This is Rebound Your Health TV with Dr. Z. That is me. I'll get jumping right into that in just a second. We're going to be talking about plantar fasciitis. Hi, Dr. Rashana. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm going to be logging in to make sure that those of you who are joining us on the other page to make sure that you have access to this broadcast live so that you, in the event that you wanted to ask some questions, um, we can actually be able to answer those questions live for you, okay? We don't want to leave anybody out. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. Um, we're going to be talking about, like I said, um, plantar fasciitis. Do I really have it? Some other ailments that kind of come along with that, that you may be thinking is your primary issue, but it might have actually started from your plantar fasciitis. And if you're out there self-diagnosing yourself or using Dr. Google, you might be putting yourself in more damage or more harm's way. So we're going to talk about some complications that come from leaving your plantar fasciitis untreated. Okay, so that's a really, really big one. Welcome to the broadcast, guys. How y'all Sunday been going? Let me know. Chime in. I think I can see some of your comments. What I notice is sometimes the comments are slightly delayed. You know, that's our technology, but not really delayed. But let me know how you guys' is, um, Sunday has been going. Hi. I see somebody just joined in again. Hi. Welcome to the broadcast. We're going to be getting going here about really about 60 seconds, 90 seconds. And we're going to jump right into it. So we can get y'all in and out of this um, live broadcast here, but you can get some great information. And I know you're also going to be preparing for your Monday. Hi, Muhammad Bala. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Welcome to Rebound Your Health TV. Um, this is Dr. Z, and I'm going to be starting this broadcast in about 90 seconds officially anyway. Um, so we can jump right in and get you guys the great information that I know you came here to get, as well as being able to share this. So some of you are going to catch the replay, and that's completely fine. But make sure you hit share, 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 or notifications at the below. And that way you can actually invite someone to listen to the broadcast with you. But if they don't catch it, invitation right away, they can listen later. So that's really crucial so that we can make sure we're sharing the wealth, right? And this wealth is information. My Sunday is great. Proud mommy moment. Yes, I saw that earlier. Dr. Ashara, you got the little one. He, he killed it. He killed it. Definitely. I, I really like that. It was awesome. All right. I think we're in here. And I'm going to share this broadcast to the page. So some of you are actually joining us on the Rebound Integrative Medical Group page. And some of you are joining us from the Dr. Zarina page. And some of you are joining us from the Zarina Peace page. That's completely fine. Wherever you are, we want you to get this information so that you can definitely make sure that you are in the know. Okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started, guys. Thanks for joining us. This is, again, y'all know me, or some of you do. If you don't, I am Dr. Zarina, also known as Dr. Z. You have joined us on Rebound Your Health TV with Dr. Z. Today, we will be discussing, do I have plantar fasciitis? And I am, again, Dr. Zarina, uh, who is a sports, um, sports medicine and integrative medicine specialist uh, that also, through my concierge practice, my authoring, speaking engagements, 
platforms just like this to make sure I bring you guys information that's going to help you rebound your health and ultimately obtain pain freedom through my integrative uh, management practices as far as pain and sports related rehab, those kind of services that we try to bring to you guys that also comes in the form of food as well as exercise and other great things. We're going to continue to bring you guys that information. You can follow me on facebook.com at forward slash Dr. Zarina. That's D-R-Z-A-R-I-N-A-H. And you also can follow me or reach us at info at Dr. Zarina. That's info at D-R-Z-A-R-I-N-A-H.com. If you have any questions or you're have inquiring about our services or you have any questions about even some upcoming topics that you would like me to address, that is where you can find me, info at drzarina.com. And don't forget to follow us and like our page at www.facebook.com forward slash Dr. Zarina. All right, so getting right into it. Thanks for joining us, guys. Today we're going to be talking about do I have plantar fasciitis? Um, do you have heel pain? Ask that question. Do you have foot pain? Do you have knee pain? Do you have ankle pain? Some of these are signs that are um, either going to tell me even about the severity of your potential plantar fasciitis um, in terms of your chronic or uh, chronic versus acute. So we definitely want to be asking those questions when you come to the house and you come into the office. So when you first, first get into the office and you tell my, a lot of times I have people who call the office and they'll say, I want to make an appointment for my plantar fasciitis. And of course, um, I always have to keep that in mind of that's what they think they have. Hi, Valencia. Thank you. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for coming. Everybody, when you get here, click invite, at least invite one more person to come share this broadcast with you so that they can get that information as well. And if they catch it on the replay, that's completely fine. But that way we can spread the wealth and spread the information to make sure that those who need it can get to it. Okay. So make sure you come in here. Go ahead and um, share, 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 share. And just Karen, we want to make sure everybody gets it. Hi, boo. <laughs> okay, so go like I said, when you come into the office, um, one of the first things we're going you're literally, most of you guys come in and tell me that you have plantar fasciitis. And I would say 50-50 probably, and I haven't done any studies, but 50% of you are correct on your diagnosis and 50% of you are incorrect. But that's a large percentage of you who are not correct on your diagnosis. And so what you've been doing is probably trying to, Many of you try to self-treat, but then you're, unfortunately, because you didn't get um, assistance or you didn't get medical attention in the earlier parts of that. Hi, Jamari. Welcome to the broadcast. You didn't get um, attention in the earlier process of that potential foot pain. Um, now it's lingered, right? And you're in a possibly, a lot of you come to me where you're in the subacute or chronic phase. And um, yes, for even for me, for positions, it can be more difficult to treat when you have gone untreated for so long. So when you're kind of in that first week to three weeks, I would say, first one, zero to three weeks, and it's not getting better in spite of your conservative things that you're trying to do at home, which may or may not be things you should be doing, you definitely want to seek medical attention at that point. And again, sometimes you come in, hi, and I've had pain in all three, but now I'm going to a chiropractor. Okay, make sure the chiropractor is um, listening to you, okay? <laughs> so that could be very useful and helpful as well. Uh, so one of the main things, signs and symptoms that I'm jumping into right now, one of the signs, a probably common one, is that you have foot, I mean, you have pain at the bottom of the foot. Pretend this is the, the uh, plantar surface of my foot, the bottom part of my foot. A lot of you have pain in that part of your foot, in, somewhere in that part of your foot. Well, most of the time, more commonly, if this is my heel, that's where you guys have a lot of pain. But believe it or not, plantar fasciitis does not only come in the form of heel pain at the heel. Sometimes you have pain along the, uh, if this is the inside of your foot, right? This is going to be my big toe, guys, okay, for the sake of uh, visualization. Sometimes you have pain on the inside of the foot at the bottom. Sometimes it's directly through the middle. Sometimes it's actually on the outside. Or, um, well, not the outside, Teddy, that's your, your big toe. So that's on the inside, the in the instep of the foot. And then sometimes you can have it closer to the toes, what we call metatarsals. So that's extremely important to understand that some people feel like, well, I don't have pain in a specific part where you commonly think of the heel or right through the middle that you might not have plantar fasciitis. And that's still possibly true because the truth about it is, is for physicians, we don't typically, that's not a diagnosis that we have to make or need to make from an x-ray MRI. So that's actually a critical point there. Now, will we order an x-ray MRI? Typically not an MRI, sometimes an x-ray. Um, the reason we, that those images may be ordered was not really to diagnose the um, plantar fasciitis, but to make sure we're ruling out something else that may be even a bigger deal, such as a pinched nerve or 
Um, some other fracture, like a, sometimes you may have a small fracture in that area of the bone, some bone in the foot that actually may be the cause for your pain. We have to make sure, make sure that we're not missing those kind of things. So you may identify, um, have been sent for an x-ray. If you haven't, that's something to consider, especially if for all, all the other conservative measures are being done and you're not getting better. Sometimes that's the next step that we need to look at is should we order an x-ray? Could you possibly have a hairline fracture, as they say? Um, or bony bruise with the bony bruises are sometimes identified, sometimes not um, with the further imaging, but that's something important too. And then also another beautiful tool that we have in our office at Rebound Sports and React is that we have an ultrasound machine. And that ultrasound machine allows me to on the spot in, time, in real time, when you come in with that pain stain day of service, to put that ultrasound on that area. And let me guys know if you have any questions um, as I'm talking. If you put that ultrasound right on that area and I can see um, if there's any small changes, be it in the ligaments or the muscles and the tissue, um, even in sometimes the nerves and things like that right there in the office. And that can be very helpful because I can also move the foot to see if there's anything um, being dislocated or any uh, changes in the tissue. That's an example for the x-ray and MRIs, you can't do that because they don't want you to move, right? So that's sometimes the advantage or the disadvantage of those imagings that we might do. Again, we don't necessarily need that, but a good example of like, for instance, earlier, some uh, a couple of times this week when I had a couple of cases of plantar fasciitis come in, I took that ultrasound, put it on there, and I'm able to look at the comparison from left to right. The good side, I'll put the ultrasound probe on, and the not so, you know, the painful side, and uh, I can see changes in the tissue. I might see thickening of, of that fascia. Those are different signs that lead me to my diagnosis. I don't actually absolutely need that because my examination and the history is gonna point me in the right direction as well, okay? Valencia said, I have both feet, but my left foot is the worst, yeah. So I'm curious, you put down in the um, chat for me too, guys, some of the things you've tried already before, because when I get to treatment, I'm gonna address some of these things um, when I'm talking about treatments, which will be, it might be two sections from this point. I guess we're gonna kind of hit, hit them hard. Um, but go ahead and let me know if there's some things that you've tried before. I'm curious to see what things you've tried uh, to treat your plantar fasciitis, if that's truly what your diagnosis has been. And um, we'll kind of tease that out a little bit too. Maybe I can touch on uh, why those things weren't working. Because uh, sometimes you are doing the right things, guys, but you're not doing it correctly or you're not doing it long enough or you're not doing it in the right um in the right order. Um, again, that's where we come in as physicians to make sure, and the specialists to make sure that you have the best care and do in the best way, okay? So another thing for assigning symptoms is that when you first step on that foot, for example, you may have a stabbing sharp pain. So um, how many of you guys have experienced that when you first step on that foot? So you've been sitting for a while or you've been laying down, the first step you take out of bed, you may have a sharp stabbing pain. Um, sometimes that happens or you have a radiating pain. That's that sometimes that happens, but the more you walk and the more you kind of get going, um, it lessens up a bit. But then um, later in the evening, when you rest again, the pain comes back. That's a common sign. Another common sign is um, we say sharp and stabby. Sometimes you also may have increased pain after exercise. That's a sign and symptom of um, things that we ask for, ask about, and look at. Or you may have an occupation where you're on your feet for long, long hours of the day. That's actually another hazard, if you will, or another risk factor for developing um, the plantar fasciitis. You said, I've had cortisone shots in both feet. They only provide a temporary relief. Yes, I can't wait to get to that part of this topic for the treatment. So I'm gonna move um, through this so that I can get to that. Valencia, stay tuned, stay right here, because I'm gonna give you some other options out there for you, okay? And everybody else there out there listening to me right now. Hi, Dr. Jenna, thanks for joining us, okay? Yes, you have those symptoms, absolutely. We're gonna get to that, I'm gonna, we're gonna help you today, okay? And then another, we talked about long hours, um, the first few steps when you first get out of bed or from just from a sitting position even, um, some of you feel better flat-footed, but uh, flat-footed meaning like without any uh, support. That's actually another risk factor if you tend to like not have much support for your um, feet or your arches. Um, in particular, maybe you walk around the house with any support, things like that. And then maybe your shoes that you do walk walking in during the day don't have much support. And also, ladies, I hate to say it, don't throw a tomato at me, but truthfully, those heels. I mean, I think a heel from a next heel is cute like y'all do, but... It's not always worth it, right? It's not worth the after effects of it. And if you've been wearing heels for many, many years of your life, it potentially is part of the culprit if you have these symptoms because it's now catching up with you as other things change as well, such as fluctuations in our weight. I do have patients 
who don't necessarily are, um, somebody said, wow. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. But uh, heels are, are not always our friend. Not always the best girlfriend. I mean, that's, what is it? The girl's best friend. It's not always the girl's best friend. And um, what it does is put strain through the arch. And again, it's not very supportive. So it also putting strain in other areas. <laughs> You guys are killing me. Um, put strain in other areas that um, can potentially basically potentiate those symptoms for plantar fasciitis. So that's um, that's bad news. Don't throw anything at me, but that's absolutely. And I always have to correct that in the office. Sometimes it's the last thing that y'all uh, would get rid of after all the other things that I uh, throw at you. Which I'm gonna give y'all some other options, but I'm just telling you. Once you do all these other things that I'm telling you, or you do many of them, and the last thing left is your heels, then you kind of gotta have a wake up call, right? Sorry, Dr. Z is here for the education and empowerment. And then I just take it to the whale. You got to drink it. I can't make you drink it. <laughs> I love y'all. MVPs are awesome. Okay, so where was I going with that? Y'all love me. Y'all giving me flabbergasted with, I mean, tongue tied because you uh, all the laughter out there. But I appreciate that um, interaction. Okay, yes and yes. See that? Thank you. Somebody support. Yes, I understand the business. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. So those are some um, the, the heels I was talking about. Fluctuation in that weight was the other piece where I was going with that before I was rudely interrupted by the laughter. Um, was the fluctuations in the weight. Now, I do have patients who are not necessarily overweight. You're fairly healthy and fit. You don't have a lot of abdominal girth or anything to that effect. However, you may still have the, a diagnosis of plantar fasciitis. So weight may not be your issue, but sometimes your issue might be fluctuations in your weight. When you're having these different... Um, ends of the spectrum, 10 to 15 pound changes that may happen over a three to six month period, and then you're back to another weight. Those kind of larger frequent um, fluctuations or weight can be culprits of our plantar fasciitis. That could be one. Weight gain can be also a culprit for plantar fasciitis. When your body say most of your adult life you're used to being at, I don't know, 150, and then over a six month to a year, it was kind of brewing, it was simmering, it was building. You didn't realize it until it was like, bam. But then six months to a year, maybe your weight increased from that 150 to 160 or 165 or whatever the case may be. Your body's not used to being at that weight. So that can also be a culprit for um, triggering plantar fasciitis in many patients, okay? So weight, weight gain or weight fluctuations can also be culprits, okay? And then my runners out there and my gymnasts and my ballet um, athletes, those um, are performances. Uh, performer, excuse me, um, those can also be not inherent risk factors, but again, you have to make sure that you're healthy and strong in that whole chain. And what I mean by that is sometimes they develop plantar fasciitis. And what I've, what I've consistently found in those individuals, my runners and gymnasts and things like that, who are always on their feet, one is because of how you're training. You may have picked up your training, right? And was, but your body wasn't prepared or you didn't prepare your body adequately. And that kind of comes from the inside out, outside in. Again, when we go over those things in the office, when you have a consultation with me about how to best prepare your body, prepare your body for the increase in training that your body asks it to do. So those are um, extremely important um, to understand that as well, that you may be fit and, you know, high performing per athlete or performer. And you're kind of like, I don't know why I I'm strong, I'm flexible, but I got plantar fasciitis. A lot of times that's the reason why it's a culprit in there. Working out is what is affecting mine. I need better insoles to keep me from over pro pronating. Yeah. So I'm about, definitely about to go into that. Hi, Zakia. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you to the rocker. Somebody says so whack. What's so whack? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. But okay, we're going about to go um, um, get into the treatment. So those are the way things that are going to be affecting the reason for you getting plantar fasciitis. And if some of you caught those things, please put that down in the comment section. You guys, your MVPs, you guys are here. You're always so helpful and great. Gracious about that because sometimes when people come back for the playback or maybe you come back to this video, um, there might just be sections of this that you're really saying, oh, what did I miss? Um, and that comment section is really helpful for your fellow MVPs watching this, okay? So when we said fluctuations in weight, somebody can type that down into the comment section. Fluctuations in weight can be your risk factor. So you might put risk factor, fluctuation in weight. Another risk factor is weight gain, okay? Another risk factor is long hours, 10, 12, 14 hours on your feet. That's another risk factor. Um, what are we gonna talk about? Unsupported sole, where you don't have support on your feet. Um, that's another risk factor, okay? Um, and if I missed anything, I know I said it already, but that was just kind of recapping there, okay? And then uh, we talked about uh, signs, signs or symptoms. Could be stabbing, um, uh, increased pain when you first get up 
um, from a seating or, or lying down position. Um, those are some really big ones, I would say. And then also having pain, not necessarily during exercise. A lot of my patients who come in and actually truly have that diagnosis, they don't necessarily have pain during their exercise. They have pain after they're done with the exercise. So that's something that I want you to pay attention and kind of be aware of and see if that fits you. Thank you, MVP. Thank you, Ayana, for writing that down. That's exactly right. Okay. So now we talk about um, some issues. I want to talk about chronic issues that can develop uh, if you go untreated. And then I'm going to jump right into treatment, which is going to be kind of bulleted. And of course, if you have any further questions about that, leave them down in the comment section. You guys are rocking it out. Thank you, MVPs. You guys are rocking it out. So chronic issues that I say develop. If you're watching this, you might say, well, I don't have any foot pain. I don't have any ankle pain. I have knee pain. Does that have anything to do with it? Possibly. Chronic issues that can develop after um, you've been untreated or didn't take care of it quite optimally with the plantar fasciitis is... Um, Hi, Travis. Hi, Keisha. Thank you for joining the broadcast. Welcome to Rebound Your Health TV. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Click share, share, share. They, one person at least um, to this broadcast so they can share this information with you. I see that too. Um, you guys are rocking it out with the uh, uh, putting these down in the comments section. You guys are MVPs. Your guys are right. Rock, rock, rock. Okay, so next was the um, chronic issues that can develop. Sometimes you can develop knee pain, back pain, and hip pain. Develop chronically because you didn't quite get optimal treatment and care for your plantar fasciitis. So sometimes people say, oh, I used to have plantar fasciitis years ago, and it kind of went away. Um, but I get it every once in a while, but it's not as bad as my back now, or it's not as bad as my knee or my hips. Believe it or not, because we have um, everything is connected. I'm a DO, which that means I'm an osteopathic physician. I'm an integrative medicine physician, right? So everything I'm going to talk to you guys about, I'm ever going to bring it to you, I'm always going to give it to you from a whole person perspective. You know, as you know, from the mind to the body is all related. And that includes the connective tissue. And that's not even no hocus pocus. That's true science and, and, and physiology backed by any scientist. The connective tissue is all continuous for the most part. So that being said, if you don't treat that optimum of that plantar fascia, it's going to continue to move up or down the chain. Provided the fact that the plantar fascia of the bottom of the foot is technically the bottom, it can only go one direction, right? It's going to go up. The other reason, which is to your knees and your hips and your back. And oftentimes, those areas are also fairly weak. They're not strong in the first place. They're not optimally strong. So if you all already have maybe some baseline arthritis, not necessarily symptomatic arthritis, but your body knows it, then it may start to develop pain in that knee. And then you kind of get this diagnosis, oh, you have knee arthritis. Well, did you really have, um, would, you would, have would you have developed painful knee arthritis, so to speak, or painful malalignment of that knee had you got the plantar fascia treat it earlier because your gait wouldn't have changed. What happens is we kind of don't realize it, but subconsciously our body's going to do what is best because it has rights over us, right? So it's going to do everything possible in spite of what we do to it or what we don't give it to try to optimally be its best, which means sometimes it may change its gait or it may change the positioning. You're not aware of it, but the body's going to do that to compensate for the fact that something else is not right. So it's going to try to bring about balance, but in the meantime, it wasn't ever balanced because you didn't get the plantar fascia treated. And now it goes up the chain to the knee, the hip, the back, and now you're kind of all out of whack. And then I'll have to untreat those things and kind of break it down to all those root causes, right, to get you back to your optimal health, which I'm here to do. Trust me, I'm here to do that for you. I'm here to do that with you, I should say. I don't do it for you, per se, right, because we're all MVPs, right? Um, but definitely, I don't want you to get to that point. I don't want you to get to that chronic area where that's the issue. Um, you're at work now. <laughs> I hope it's not a long hours there, Miss Keisha. And I got chronic issues that can develop me back and hip pain. You're perfect. Yes, that's right. So that's going to be very, very helpful for people watching the replay. Now, let's jump right into it. Here is the treatments that are um, out there. I'm going to give you conventional and not so conventional issues. I mean, treatments um, that some of you may have tried this. Some of you may have not. But either way, I'm going to knock it out and kind of give you guys this right now. Hi, Sharifa. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Ayana says, I'm so happy I don't have arthritis, but my neck and back are misaligned. Hopefully, these treatments will help or else you'll be seeing me in January. Dr. C. I got you. I got you. Okay? All right. So one of the um, common things that physicians may recommend are night splints. Night splints are something that gives a, um, a muscles a stretch. In particular, I'm going like this. It's pretending this is my foot. The calf muscle is stretch and putting your foot in a position of more neutrality so that your foot, when we typically sleep, our foot hangs, right? Um, or just because you're not contracting it per se or putting it in a specific position 
But the night splints are helping to um, decrease that uh, con constriction or restriction, I should say, in the myofascial planes of that foot and ankle area. So sometimes your physician may recommend night splints, okay? So that's something. Let me know, and please write this down. Night splints, that was number one. So we're gonna go in order. Number one is night splints. MVPs, come on, um, let's help each other out and write that down in the comment section for me. And that way we can march it out and people, um, again, we're gonna all help. It's all community, okay? The community of um, MVPs, so let's help each other out. But that's the number one is a night splint. Not necessarily in this particular order, guys, but I'm definitely gonna march these out where to comment and maybe not so common. And I'll kind of tell you that when I'm, I'm pointing these things out. So that's night sprints. And then another thing might be arch support. So that's another thing that your physician may either order. So number two is arch support. Um, they might order it or they might recommend you go to the over the counter. And those arch supports are typically in the pharmacy section where you see all those like diabetic socks and diabetic shoes and wraps and things like that. It's usually over in that area. So they can be either off the counter or customized. And art support is another one that can be helpful for a lot of people. I would say it typically is more helpful if you're not chronically, you know, in a chronic, you know, like three, six, eight, ten months out. Um, sometimes when the art support will still help in those if you're in that far out in it, but you typically need a little bit more than the art support by that point. But art support is number two, okay? Number three is a heel cup. And um, number three is a heel cup. So that's also something that can be the customized over the counter. Your physician may recommend that as well. And that's to protect and decrease that pressure that's on the heel because what often happens is that we'll have, it's not uncommon that people believe or used to believe, and it's kind of been debunked in the research, is that when they have heel spurs, for instance, that's the culprit to what developed their plantar fasciitis. It's actually not really been consistently uh, found to be true because believe it or not, all, many of you are off there, out there walking around with heel spurs um, and you don't know it, and you don't have any plantar fasciitis, some of you. So it, it's not necessarily the culprit for that, you know? And then they also used to think, oh, okay, just shave down the heel spur, and that'll get rid of the heel spur, and I'll get rid of the plantar fasciitis. Not so much either, because heel spurs develop because of a inflammatory response, and, <coughs> excuse me, an inflammatory response, and, um, and the bone, the bone reaction. But if you cut it off, you technically created the same issue, and it could potentially grow back and they ought to do. So then you're not gonna go for another surgery. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So number three is arch support, okay? Um, arch, I mean, number three, excuse me, is heel cup, heel cup. And I'll just give you some context about that when it comes to those parts. People think that that's the culprit, but not so much, okay? So that was number three, heel cup. So number four, I call rolling ice. And that can be in two forms, guys. I recommend this a lot because um, before I get to number four, someone had a question. All those things sound so comfortable, actually, since. I've been on my feet all day and I still feel like I have plantar fascia, arthritic heel spurs, bull ligament tendons, just everything today. Yeah, I know, sweetie. Um, yeah, that sounds like a long day, but a lot of these things can be helpful, absolutely. So number, uh, yeah, so definitely, that can be very helpful. And I think I missed another question, rolling ice, yeah. So that's number four, rolling ice. And I call that, I'll look at that in two ways. Two ways I uh, um, address rolling ice, what that means is you get a little Dixie cup, you fill it to the top. I'll usually tell people to put seven, fill seven Dixie cups up and put them in the freezer. And then every day you're going to use one of those. So seven days a week and you redo it on the, on the seventh day, of course, fill seven more up. What you're going to do is you're going to take that heel, I mean that full ice, iced cup of ice, basically it's going to become ice at that point, and you take it and you apply pressure to that area of pain in the bottom of the foot. But you're applying pressure. So it's doing two things for you and from a treatment perspective at home is it's providing anti-inflammatory um, treatment because if it's swelling inflammation in the area that's causing the pain, then the ice, of course, is gonna reduce the inflammation and reduce, reduce the swelling, hence reduce the pain. The pressure you're gonna be applying there as well is gonna be also, a, it's like a twofer, it's gonna be helpful for the pain um, reduction because you're also gonna be applying the pressure that's gonna help in, as you move along the um, bottom of the foot, whereas along the plantar fascia, that pressure that you're applying is gonna also be helping to pinch and shape and mobilize the, the, that fascia, that area that otherwise is restricted. So I love that because it's a twofer. I have a couple questions here. Yes, the frozen water bottle. That's where I was going next with that. Thank you. Yep, that's the other uh, rolling ice part of that. I wear heel cups while I work out. Good. And Valencia, I ordered some art support from a vendor. That's the only thing that has helped. 
awesome. And then you're helping the other MVPs out, forwardarts.com. You guys are great. So I'm talking about MVPs. That, that helped too. I freeze water bottles. Yes. So that's my other um, uh, rolling ice uh, treatment at home is taking an ice bottle of water, Dasani or not, whatever. <coughs> as long as it's plastic, you don't have to drink it or not. You know, you don't have to drink it, but just use it as your rolling ice. You put it in the freezer. Make sure it freezes. It's actually probably a cheaper way to do this, right? Because that could just be your foot treatment water bottle. Nobody else touches it, right? You don't drink it. It's just used for therapeutic purposes. And then every day you pull it back out the freezer, put it back in when you're done, put it back out, put that like. So you're going to lean down into it, either sitting or standing. I typically tell people to do it um, sitting because then they can put pressure more down into it. And when you're standing, you can't quite get that pressure in. Again, it's not just about the fact that it's ice. It's a twofer. It's the ice decreasing. Now, hi, Dr. Ebony. Hi, Dr. Kwanzaa. Thank you for welcoming to the broadcast. Hi, Dr. Nina. Welcome to the broadcast. Mwah. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, we're just talking about plantar fasciitis. And uh, do you have it? You know, so many people out there are uh, self-diagnosing themselves. And now we're on this uh, treatment aspect. We're talking about number four, right? Four is the rolling ice. And one of those rolling ice aspects, hi, Dr. Nicole, thanks for joining the Welcome to the broadcast, is the uh, Dixie Cups. And the other one is the rolling bottle, ice bottle water. And you're going to sit down and put pressure into that. That pressure is going to, again, increase the um, flexibility of the fascial planes in that, in that plantar fascia. And the ice aspect of that is going to be decreasing inflammation and swelling in that area. So that's a twofer. That's why I love it so much, okay? You want to do that, typically, guys, definitely at the end of your day. But I often tell people to be preventative minded is that even if you don't have pain and you, but you work lots of hours or you a runner or things like that, ice can still be very, very therapeutic from a preventative perspective. So you do it anyway so that you don't end up at the, where the roar, the flame is roaring, get it when it's simmering. So sometimes when the simmer is happening and I call that the inflammation process is initiating, you don't manifest itself as pain yet. And sometimes the pain doesn't manifest itself until it's roaring. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be managing and treating and being preventative and, and preventative minded. So a lot of times I'll tell my people that had a history of plantar fascia, especially. Sorry, I'm late. We'll watch the replay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Please share it and watch the replay. If this information is helpful, please do share it with someone that you might think might be helpful. Hi, Anna. Thank you for joining. And welcome to the broadcast. Um, so... Yeah, so definitely I tell people that they say, oh, Dr. Z, so helpful. My plantar fascia, that big, that ice thing really worked. That rolling ice really worked. Now they're not in pain, but I tell them, are you still working 12, 14 hours? If you are, <coughs> at the end of your day, even though you don't have pain, you still want to do that. That's preventative because, and believe me, um, a lot of times what you're going to do is redevelop that if you're not taking care of it, right? You're not taking care of yourself, taking care of that foot. That foot worked long hours for you, right? So you want to kind of put back into some self-care. And that's what MVP behavior is about. That's what MVP mindset is about. Okay, so do that even if it doesn't have pain, especially if you have those risk factors that we talked about earlier in the broadcast. Hi, Sophia. Thank you. Welcome to the broadcast. Rebound Your Health TV with Dr. Z. Welcome to the broadcast. So that was number four. Number five, get it down for you guys. Get number five. Let's go. MVPs, we're almost there to the end. Number five is a foam roller. And I'm actually going to pull this together with the foam roller. It's kind of the same process of the um, what you're doing in the foot with the with the iced um, bottle of water. But the foam roller is not just for the foot. Again, you know when I just discussed with you guys that um, at the end of the day, our the connective tissue in our bodies are actually really connected. So if you what you want to do is make sure that you you can't see my foot, so I'm, <laughs> I'm looking down. But what you want to do is make sure that your foam rolling your calf. And, and even in simpler terms, you want to make sure you're foam rolling on the muscle, not directly on bone. Um, definitely visit my YouTube channel, put in Rebound Your Health TV with Dr. Z. I did do a video on foam rollers and what you shouldn't do and what you should do in terms of how to do that correctly. So make sure you visit that as well, and that'll give you some more information. But hi, Dr. Kareem. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. But the foam roll you want to be doing on the muscles, on the anterior, the front, the back, and the sides of your lower body. And what that's going to do is, again, release those restrictions in the muscles. A lot of you, again, you're working long hours. Maybe you're not getting to work out like you want to. You're definitely not stretching like you need to, right? So this is going to help keep your body in the 
um, neutral, again, the neutral and the flexibility state that it needs to be so that that fascia is not creating more restrictions and inflammation. That foam roll is going to do that. So you're going to foam roll the front, the back, and the insides of your lower body that's waist down, not directly on bone, and also of the foot. So those things are going to help also because if you just do the foot and you're just looking at the foot, you're missing the boat, guys. Again, I told you, right? At the end of the day, it's about the whole situation. And your foot is connected to what? They said the foot bone is connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bone is connected to the... Y'all know the song. It's absolutely true. It's not just a cliche song, okay? So that's really, really important. So that was um, hurting feet equals sour face. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Um, Anna, I, my doc made me get rid of all the flip-flops. Yes! That was going to that next... Um, all I wear are Burks and do daily foot stretches is a totally healthy. Absolutely. See, that's what I'm talking about. MVPs, we share. And that's great information to share with the fellow MVPs that are watching this broadcast with you. Thank you, Anna, for chiming in and answering and, and adding that to this conversation. That is something that I was going to be discussing. Where, well, I kind of touched on it, get rid of the heels. Um, but I should have said flip-flops as well. Again, because it has no art support. So we did kind of talk about that. But, but thank you for mentioning it because... A lot of people don't think about flip-flops, art support. They're not connecting the two. So that's critical. That's actually extremely important. So we did talk about that. And thank you for bringing that home. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about, MVP. Y'all on it. So that was number five, foam roller. Number six, a tennis ball. Okay? If you don't play tennis, no problem. They have tennis balls everywhere. Everywhere, pretty much. Pretty much everywhere, right? You go to Walmart, Target, Dick's, Sporting. Go anywhere. You can find a tennis ball for the most part. Take that tennis ball. And also, you don't have to necessarily be sitting or anything. You can sit or stand with that one, but against the same principle of putting the pressure in that, okay? Putting the pressure and rolling in a rolling in a rolling sensation or um, where your foot is going to roll around it, actually, in this direction or back and forth. I always tell people, don't do this more than two minutes straight, okay? Because you can create more pain and more inflammation than, you know, do more harm than good. So there always is a cat, I don't say caveat, but everything is about moderation. So don't overdo it, but you can pretty much do everything I've talked about so far. Nice plants, art support, heel cups, the rolling ice, the foam roller, the tennis ball. You can do those pretty much throughout the day, frequently through the day. I advise you, especially my desk workers um, and teachers, if you ever get a moment, you know, to sit down, my nurses, you get a moment to sit down and do your charting. Pull out your tennis ball, okay? Don't be ashamed. Throw that little crock off. I don't like crocs, by the way. It's kind of like flip-flops, but throw that crock off and put that tennis ball right into that arch of the foot and get going. Take every opportunity you can. Set your alarm clocks on your phone to every hour so it goes off and it says tennis ball, tennis ball, whatever you need to do to make sure you're, you're getting your MVP behavior in, okay? That's absolutely going to get you to the next. Hi, Nura. Thanks for joining us. Love that tennis ball. If I can get it away from my dog. <laughs> yeah. Good. <coughs> Good luck with that. All right. Number seven, guys. Number seven is um, more conventional and I'm a little in eh on it, okay, which is steroid injections. You can't obviously do this on your own, but sometimes physicians will recommend this. Have I ever done it? I've done it. I've done it before. They're not like X, you know, ever, you know, never, ever do it. But the best way and the literature supports it, if you're going to get a steroid injection, like some of you have already mentioned, it only kind of gives you temporary relief. Why? Because it's not addressing the root of the problem. It's just addressing the inflammation. And if your issue is chronic, what happens a lot of times, guys, once you get past that three to six months of that issue, especially like a plantar fascia, typically inflammation is un unfortunately not the, the reason of the pain anymore. In the beginning, it was inflammation and your body's trying to tell you, hey, hey, hey. But eventually what happens is that inflammation will start to um, dissipate because inflammation is not the issue, but that inflammation still destroys the tissue. It destroys the fascia. It causes degeneration of that uh, of those ligaments in the fascia. So chronically what happens is the pain is actually, the culprit is not inflammation. The culprit is the disruption and the degenerate ligaments or degenerate fascia, the degenerate connective tissue. That's the issue. So that's why long-term steroids injections don't work, um, at least in this particular case, or in general, usually for these type of issues. Because steroids are meant to decrease the inflammation. If inflammation is not your culprit, that's why some people say, oh, steroid used to work. Don't tell me that. It used to work temporarily. Now when I get it, it doesn't work. That's because your issue is not inflammation anymore. Your issue is the generation of the tissue. Okay? So that's really, really important. I want to give you that information because not the average person knows that. We know that as doctors, but the average American doesn't. 
Okay. Hi, Lenita. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Hi, Dr. Kwanzaa, once again. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so that was number... Tell me what number we on, guys. <laughs> Dr. Z, I get so passionate and so involved. Number six was tennis ball. Number seven is steroid injection. Okay, that's more conventional. And number eight is um, something that I call homeopathic injections, which we do do at the Rebound Sports and Rehab. And those homeopathic injections, I do like because they're kind of plant-based. Essentially, they're all plant-based. And what those do is similar to, um, kind of similar to a steroid without the side effect, you know, without the side effect. Because also what we know with steroid injections, if you do them repeatedly, not only do they stop working in many cases, um, they also can cause further damage to the tissue. So that's even, you know, worse. So you just further potentiate the issue. But early, early on in that case, the first zero to three weeks, that might be helpful again with steroid. But once you pass that, it's not the business, okay? So that was... Um, Number seven, we said, right? <laughs> you guys keep a number. No, I mean, please help your doctor out. Help doctors you out. Number seven was steroid, yes. And number eight was homeopathic injection. Yes. Thank you, guys. Oh, y'all rock. That's why I don't rely on my MVPs, too. Remember, we're a community. Okay, number eight was homeopathic injections, yes. And that's a plant-based injection that we provide. Um, again, right at the area of the... Um, of the pain, does it help heal the area? Some studies suggest that it does, some studies suggest that it doesn't, but what we do know is that it's uh, typically safer in terms of like not causing degeneration, you know, of the ligament or tissue long term, and also less likely for any rupture to occur. Um, so that's why I do um, like doing those. If your body responds to that, it's definitely a way to go. Homeopathic injections, and we have different kinds that we um, provide, but that's another option for you um, should you want to avoid steroids. Some times that people, again, I try to treat you also, I have to meet you where you are with your belief system. And sometimes people don't believe in steroids or they're just completely against it. But then as me as the expert, right, as a, as a physician and a specialist, I have to make sure my toolbox is full of things that can help meet you where you are. What are your belief systems? Where are you trying to go? So if steroids is not part of that, then okay, hey, pull out something else, Dr. Zerina, educate me on something else. What are my other options? That's one of my biggest, like, that breaks my heart many times as a physician, and I am kind of doing a sidebar a little bit, is that when people, when patients come and tell me, my doctor said I just have to live with this forever, or they say, I can't, there's nothing else to, um, that can help you. But they say it so matter of factly, like, because I can't treat you, <laughs> or because I can't help you, no one, you know, no one can. There are some things that are not easily treated, but I'm also very honest about that. I'm also very honest about my lane. Everything is not, you know, for everybody. So that's really important. That's why it's so important to have a rapport with your physician to make sure they truly understand you. And I truly want to understand you as well, but, but, you know, vice versa, to make sure we can get you to your next optimally and long term. So that's my little soapbox. I'm about to get off of that soapbox and go to number, uh, <clears throat> is it number nine, my MVPs? Got distracted. That's okay. <laughs> Number nine. <clears throat> so we talked about steroid. Then we said number eight was homeopathic. And number nine is something they call shockwave therapy. And some of you, some variant of that is what they call ultrasound therapy that you might have had or you may have heard of. And in, in actually, when you go to physical therapy, they use an ultrasound, ultrasound machine that sends waves. So it's a therapeutic ultrasound, unlike a diagnostic ultrasound is what I was referring to earlier in this broadcast. Um, but a therapeutic ultrasound can also be helpful to kind of help break up um, <clears throat> uh, restricted tissue and scar tissue in that area. Okay, so that can be helpful as well. Okay, and then our next number, number 10, um, is a Graston technique, which we I like to do sometimes on some people if it's um, appropriate. A Graston technique uh, can sometimes be in a form of a metal or a bamboo stick or something to that effect. Um, the long story short, what's important for you to understand is that the Graston technique is also something that's going to help break up re uh, restrictions and scar tissue that has developed in that area in a non-surgical manner, okay? And sometimes you need maybe repeated uh, series of that, maybe over a three to four week span where you come back maybe once a week, um, but it can be very advantageous provided that you're doing some other things that we're going to be discussing in the office as it relates to, again, inside out, outside, and healing, okay? That's extremely important. Okay, so that was number 10. Number 11 is acupuncture. Now, and that can be helpful as well. 
Um, and it's helped a lot of people, guys. And when I say a lot, I mean thousands and thousands of people. So again, meeting where you are, there's so many options out there that sometimes I think many of you, raise your hand if you're one of them. When you've had some issue, orthopedic issue or muscle skeletal issue, you kind of felt like or you thought by the time you went through the medical world that it was only three options, surgery, pills, or injections, right? You thought that was it. And I'm here to tell you there's more, there's more, there's more. And I'm going to continue to continue to be a student of my of my craft, so to speak, to make sure that I am educated well enough to kind of bring, continue to bring you the empowered education that you need to make sure that you can make best decisions for you in your life. So there's so many options out there for you. And I want and I'm sure that maybe some of you try this and some of you haven't, but it's out, information is out there for you. OK, so that was number I think that was number 10 MVPs. I can punch you. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Taya. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast of Revalue Health TV with Dr. Z. And we are our number 11, I believe. Last but not least is regenerative medicine. Why regenerative medicine? As you remember, just two, two um, treatments back when I talked about the degeneration that happens over time with ligaments and tissues, especially with the plantar fascia. <clears throat> Once you're outside of that acute zone, guys, you're out of that side of that acute phase of injury or pain, it's typically less and less and less inflammation as the reason for the pain. That doesn't mean inflammation doesn't happen, but you have the generation of that tissue now. And what do you have to do? You need to regenerate that tissue. Hence, that's where regenerative medicine comes into play. And that can be very, very helpful, not just helpful, truly treat and cure in some people's cases where you got 95% back to your native tissue. How many things out there can do that without surgery? Not a lot of treatments out there in the medical field can do that. Regenerative medicine has been shown over and over again in the literature to be that thing that people um, can really find that win. But I'm talking about that long-term win, win where you don't have to keep going back to the pills or keep going back for, you know, whatever. You, you really want to regenerate that tissue to get you to what your true, what your true goal is, which is improve your function, improve the integrity of that uh, issue, and ultimately get pain freedom, right? Obtain pain freedom. So that's absolutely critical. I've been using a ball for my plantar fascia. It's good. Regenerative medicine, number one. No, absolutely. I completely agree with that. I'm definitely saying that. Hi, Dr. Sam. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Dr. Allen. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Honored to have you all here. Please invite one friend, just one friend at least, or in a click share in the notification below. If you missed some of this broadcast, I'm actually um, tying up this last treatment, but don't worry about it. This will be on replay. And if you had any questions that I missed, I'm also going to come back to the comments to make sure I answer any of those questions. But indeed, guys, um, watch the replay. It'll, I promise you, it may. I'm, I'm almost going to guarantee that it's something I said in this video that you didn't know. Yeah, I'm going to hold, hold me to it. <laughs> Hold me to it, but I bet you it's something you didn't know. So hopefully this can help you or somebody else. So again, tying up that last treatment with the regenerative medicine, if the issue has become now that the tissue has degenerated, right? You have scar tissue, the, th the t fascia is thickened, um, it's, it's more lax. Sometimes you have an increased laxity in that area. Outside of surgery, which again, surgery is, can be very, very expensive. That has no guarantees in surgery. Actually, there's no guarantees in medicine, quite frankly, for that matter. But if you can afford sur avoid surgery um, at all costs, I always think of surgery as the last um, option. I do believe in surgery. I'm not one of those doctors that's like, I don't believe that. No, sometimes you need surgery. Absolutely. But if I, but my goal, is to hopefully, is to help you either prevent the need for surgery um, altogether. And then oftentimes, regenerative medicine is just that. It does do that for people. I humbly and gratefully can state that I've done that for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people um, at this point. And I can say hundreds of thousands because I've been now um well hundreds of people that gets into the thousands <laughs> correct that thousands of people because i've been doing this for over 12 years um and i can humbly grace you to say that but definitely guys look into that you definitely visit our website at www.rim.group.org and that is a section in there for all about regenerative medicine and some of the things that can be provided and help help you with and definitely don't um, hesitate to contact me at info at drzarina.com for any further questions that you may have, either for further topics that you'd like me to discuss, or maybe to schedule your free, no obligation, 15-minute virtual exam room visit with me to get you kind of discover what can we do and how can we help you get to your next. Again, that's info at drzarina.com, and then we can forward you the link to schedule your free, no obligation, virtual exam room visit with me to get you to your next. It's all about rebounding your health, guys. 
And this is about pain freedom. And I mean pain freedom, pain freedom, pain freedom. That's of the mind, the body, and emotionality, the spirit, everything. And um, that's what I'm here to do. I'm passionate about that. And you guys know I love you. Um, let me see if there's any more questions. What y'all laughing about? I'm missing something, I think. I see some laughter. Just found something called Soul Mender. Ordered it. If I had surgery to 4 p. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I didn't know you had surgery. Definitely, definitely, definitely. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining us again. I am Dr. Zarina. I hope this information was useful. Um, if you missed the live, don't hesitate. Catch the replay. Share it um, with people that you think might be able to benefit from it. And, of course, your MVPs rock because she was writing down, participating right along with me to make sure that you got the information and these um, points down in the comment section so that for those or your fellow MVPs that are coming back to watch this later are going to be able to get that information, too. So you guys rock. Um, as always, I am Dr. Serena, also known as Dr. Z, your integrative sports medicine, integrative pain management specialist, here to help you rebound your health, ultimately attain pain, three, pain freedom through my concierge practice, my telemedicine services, my consulting services, speaking engagements, and platforms and TV for, for, formats just like this to help you get to your next. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Humbly and gracious for you guys um, just being there. There, being ready to receive, receive to get you to your next. That's what all it's about. Meet me again this same um, day next Sunday um, for our next one, and we'll see you guys soon. Mwah.